In this episode, I'm going to trash on the use of shotgun microphones. I'm going to suggest to content creators that a shotgun style microphone is probably not a very good choice for you. Now, I know that shotgun mics are extremely popular, and there's not a lot of advice that's contrary to using them. So, if you stick around with me for the next few minutes, I'll explain why a shotgun microphone is not a good choice, and maybe you'll learn something. Now, as a content creator, you realize that you need to put out high-quality technical content in order to have a compelling package that your audience will want to digest. And so you want to put out good quality video. And you want to put out really good quality audio. As a matter of fact, the audio quality is probably more important than the video quality in your productions. And if you have indistinct sounding audio that makes you sound like you're on the other side of the room people are going to have a real hard time staying engaged with your content. And you've probably discovered that the microphones that are built into your camera just aren't going to cut it. Now, the microphones that are in my camera are actually pretty good quality mics. But they won't work for me because they're just too far away to get a really tight, clean pickup in my dialogue. And so, having discovered this, you soon realize you need a different microphone in order to pick up the dialogue for your video productions and have it be at the quality level that you need. And so, I think a lot of content creators think, well, I need a microphone. I need a microphone for video. I need a video mic. And what do you know? Rode makes exactly that. A Rode video mic. And the Rode Video Mic is a shotgun style microphone. It's a small mic that mounts right on the top of your camera. How convenient. It's a mic of the style sort of like this. This one's made by Sony, but it's the same kind of thing. It's a small shotgun microphone that mounts right on the camera. And a shotgun microphone is, of course, an extremely directional microphone. So it picks up sounds primarily from the front and the sounds that come into the sides or the rear get rejected. And so the idea is that the microphone will therefore have a longer reach. And you'll pick up things in front of the camera better than you would with just the camera's built-in mics. Now that isn't really a proper technical explanation as to what's going on. But in practical terms, that's how these things are marketed and how people perceive them. Now of course, shotgun mics come in a number of different formats. Some are short, stubby little ones like this. A lot of them are a little bit longer. They still mount on top of the camera. Some are actually quite long and they're intended to be mounted on a boom pole. My comments in this video apply to all of these different microphones from all of the different manufacturers. And don't get me wrong, the products that I'm referencing are good products. There's nothing wrong with a Rode video mic or a similar mic from somebody like Deity or Shure or Audio-Technica or any of these manufacturers. They're all good products. They just don't work well in the situations that they're employed in by a lot of people. So before I go trashing shotgun mics, let's talk about where I might actually use a shotgun mic like that. Well, if I was going to do some filming outdoors, maybe at a county fair, maybe if I was going to go to Main Street and uh, do a little bit of filming down there, it might be a practical choice because I can just clip the mic right on top of the camera and it will give me a little bit better forward pickup than the built-in mics in the camera. And that would be easy and convenient, and it would probably work well. But it wouldn't be a professional level choice. Well, what would be better would be to have a microphone that I can actually get right up near where the sound source is. And we know that this is what professionals would use, because if you look at the evening news and they send a reporter on scene, 
do they use a little shotgun mic on the top of their camera to do their news broadcast? No, no, they don't. What you would find is the reporter on the scene would be probably using some kind of handheld microphone. And he or she would be down there saying, I'm reporting live from the county fair. And when they want to interview a person on the scene, they would take that microphone and put that into the person's face to get a good, clean pickup of what they're saying. So, when I want to know where a tool is best used or best deployed, oftentimes I'll look at how professionals do it. If I want to know how to use wrenches, I might watch an auto mechanic for an afternoon to see what tools he chooses and how he uses them. And so, along those lines, I think, where do real professionals use shotgun mics? Well, as we know, roving reporters, probably not. Where do professionals need really clean, clear dialogue, like we're doing with our content creation? How about the broadcast industry? Uh, imagine an FM radio station. Well, what do you see with an FM radio station? You see the DJ sitting in the DJ booth, and he's got a big broadcast microphone right in front of him, and he's talking right into it. They're not using a shotgun mic. How about on a big-budget podcast, like the Joe Rogan podcast, for example? What does he use? Well, again, he's using a large broadcast microphone, and he's right up on top of it. Because that's what works. How about in a live sound situation for a rock and roll band on stage? No, we don't use shotgun mics there either. In a recording studio where you're recording a hit album? No, you don't use shotgun mics there either. The one place where I do see shotgun mics used occasionally is in film production. When you're shooting a movie, a major motion picture. Now, in those cases, I think the ideal situation is to put a microphone on the actor. And they use these little miniature microphones that they can hide in their clothing or maybe on the set right next to them that um, doesn't get shown in the video frame. But sometimes that just isn't practical because the actors need more mobility or because of the mechanics of that scene, they can't really put a mic on them. And so in that case, they might use a shotgun mic. They might also use a standard cardioid type mic. And they'll put that mic on a pole. And they'll hold the pole up right above the actor's heads. Just out of the video frame so you don't see it. But in that case, the microphone is still pretty close to the sound source. The mic's only a couple feet off of the actor. And when they do this, where do they do it? Well, usually they're inside of a soundstage, a uh, Hollywood studio where they shoot these movies. And this is a big room that is typically sound controlled. So there's acoustic padding on the walls. So it's not a real reflective situation. And it's a big room. And so it's a pretty sound controlled environment. So they can get good, clean, non-reverberant sound. And... That's important when dealing with directional microphones, and that is one of the main reasons why I'm suggesting that a shotgun microphone is not a good choice. So let's talk a little bit about how microphones work and why I'm saying shotgun microphones aren't a great choice. Well, the first element is that you need to get the microphone up close to your sound source if you want it to pick up the sound source primarily without picking up background noise. And with any microphone that's going to be four, five, six, or more feet away, you're just going to have a hard time no matter what that microphone is. So putting a microphone in your camera that's, you know, more than an arm's reach away is probably not going to give you a great sound pickup no matter what kind of microphone it is. Now, a shotgun mic may work a little better than the built-in mics in your camera, but you're still not going to get really tight, professional-quality sound. 
But then the other issue is the space that you're in. Uh, like I mentioned, I might use a shotgun mic if I was going to roam around at the county fair or downtown and get some footage outdoors. Because the outdoors is an environment that is not particularly echoic. There aren't any nearby walls or floors or ceilings to reflect the sound back at me. So if there's a sound source, the microphone is going to be picking up sound more or less directly from that source rather than from the source plus reverberations around in the room. So when we're choosing a microphone, one of the primary characteristics that I'm looking at to make my decision as to what microphone to use is the polar pattern. And microphones come in a variety of polar patterns from omnidirectional to shotgun. Now, if this was an omnidirectional microphone, it would be sensitive to sound coming in from any direction. So if I was to have a guitar and point the microphone at the guitar, that would sound great. And I could put the guitar off to the side of this microphone, and it would still pick it up, and it would still sound great if it was an omnidirectional microphone. And if it's an omnidirectional microphone, it's going to pick up sounds from all sides, and it will sound just about equally good from sounds coming in from all sides. Now, of course, the downside with an omnidirectional microphone is it's picking up sounds from the rear and the sides, and so it is going to pick up more background extraneous noise and not just the thing that you're trying to focus on. And so with an omnidirectional microphone, you usually have to be closer to your sound source in order to get the levels from your sound source to be well above all of the background noise. So you have to be a little bit tighter on source. Uh, another plus with omnidirectional microphones is that they sound more or less the same if they are close or far away from a sound source. The sound character doesn't change much based on distance. Now, of course, as you get further away, you'll get more background noise mixed in. But if you put this microphone near a guitar or a couple feet back from the guitar, the tone of that guitar should sound pretty darn similar. The more popular microphone is a cardioid mic. A uh, cardioid is heart-shaped, and that references the shape of the microphone sensitivity pattern, but essentially it means that the microphone is going to be most sensitive to sounds that are coming into the front, and the sounds that come in from the sides and the rear get attenuated. So it's a directional microphone, and that's probably the most popular kind of microphone you'll find out there because we want to focus on the sound source. Now the downside with a cardioid mic is that they're not absolutely uniform. So if I was to point a cardioid mic at a guitar directly on or right on axis, it would sound great. And if I moved that guitar off to the side of the microphone, well the volume is going to drop somewhat because the microphone is directional. But it's not only going to drop, it's also going to change its tone character some. You'll likely find that the high frequency strings of the guitar get attenuated more than the low frequency strings do. And so the guitar might sound a little softer or more bassy as it gets off axis. And oftentimes these tone change characteristics are not completely smooth. It isn't just simply a smooth rolling off of the high end you may find that there are certain tones or certain notes that get attenuated more than others. And so if you're recording a so source or picking up a source that's direct onto the microphone, it should sound good. But as you get off to the sides on a directional microphone, eh, depending upon what mic you're using, those sources may start to sound a little strange. They might not be rendered completely accurately anymore. And then we move into supercardioid or hypercardioid mics, which are just like cardioid mics, but even more so. So they are even more directional. That is, they have a narrower band in front where they are most sensitive. And off to the sides and rear, there's even more attenuation than there would be in a standard cardioid mic. And the artifacts that come in with having a directional mic are even more pronounced, generally speaking. 
Supercardioid mics are often useful on live performance stages where you want to uh, only pick up the vocalist and you want to make sure that you don't get too much other background noise into that microphone. And if the vocalist has a stage monitor in front of them that is blasting their voice back at them, you don't want the microphone to pick up too much of that noise, which could potentially cause feedback or make the vocals sound less good. And then we move into shotgun microphones, which is more like a super, super cardioid mic. So it's very sensitive off the front and very attenuated in the sides and the rear. And like I mentioned, the tighter the pattern, the more of an engineering challenge it is to avoid strange sound artifacts on off-axis sounds. And so a good sounding shotgun microphone is an engineering challenge. Now, we need to understand how microphones have these directional characteristics. What makes a microphone directional? Generally speaking, the cartridge, the element that's inside of the microphone, tends to be more or less an omnidirectional device. And it is the body of the microphone that imparts its directional characteristics. And so what is done is the microphone is designed to accept sound in the front of the capsule and also around the back side of the capsule. And in this Electro Voice mic right here, you'll see there's also additional grills all along the handle, which can accept sound coming in. In the microphone body, the case is designed like a carefully tuned musical instrument that can mix the sounds together between the sounds coming into the front and the sound waves that are coming into the sides or the rear of this capsule. And it's made in such a way that when this sound and this sound meet up with each other, the sounds that are coming in from the back side or or on the handle get canceled out. Now if we want to take two sounds and mix them together in such a way that they cancel each other out, well those two sounds have to be darn near identical. Uh, for example, if we were going to mathematically cancel something out, you could have plus two and minus two, and when you add them together, you get zero. But if you had plus three and minus two, and you mixed those together and added them together, well, they don't cancel each other out. You have a difference of one. And so it's important in a directional microphone, and particularly a shotgun microphone, that the sound source that's coming in to the front and to the rear and in other openings in the microphone is identical. Otherwise they won't be able to cancel each other out and you'll get some really strange sounding audio artifacts. Now this is pretty possible to do if you're in the great outdoors or if you're in a proper sound controlled room like a recording studio or maybe a Hollywood film set that is acoustically controlled in a very large room without walls. But that's not where I'm at and that's not where a lot of content creators are at either. Or right now I'm in a relatively small room that is not designed to be an acoustically controlled space. This room actually has walls and ceilings and floors and they're pretty darn close to me. And so that means that my audio in this room, my voice is hitting the microphone and then going across the room and hitting a wall coming back at me. And with a shotgun mic, that means that the audio from my voice would be going into the front of the mic, but the room reverberant sounds will be coming back and they'll be coming into the back side of the mic or along these vents on the handle. And that's not the same sound as what went into the front. The sounds that are coming off the room are gonna have a different tone characteristic 
based upon the dimensions of the room and which frequencies are supported or attenuated because of the character of the room. And they're going to be time delayed because it takes a little bit of time for audio to travel across the room and make its way back. And so if I try to mix two sound sources together that don't sound the same and one of them is time delayed from the other, well, as you can imagine, the result of that is going to be a mess. And so you could put a shotgun mic on your camera and your initial response might be, yeah, it, it has knocked the background down some and I seem to get a little bit better pickup off the front. I'll call that a win. But the fact is that oftentimes when you use a mic like that in a real room situation, you get kind of funky response out of the mic. It's not a really accurate rendition of the audio you're trying to pick up. And your initial impression may not be so bad. But over time, as you cultivate those audio listening skills and you begin to be a bit more discerning about proper sound quality, you start to notice that, you know, that mic doesn't really sound right. And so that's why I'm suggesting that a shotgun microphone is not the right mic, especially for indoors applications in reasonably small rooms that are not engineered to be sound controlled. You'd be much better off with a standard cardioid mic. Now, of course, any directional microphone is going to have some of these characteristics and some of these issues. But a standard cardioid mic is going to have much less of this sort of sound mixing impact because the uh, resultant is not trying to totally do a massive cancellation. Uh, you'll get a little bit of those interactions, but it won't be nearly as obnoxious as it would be with a supercardioid or hypercardioid or especially a shotgun mic. So my advice is to choose a mic with the widest polar pattern that you can comfortably work with. And that might be a hypercardioid mic, it might be a cardioid mic. Those tend to actually work pretty well in most situations. Right now, this microphone that I'm using is a Shure SM86 cardioid. I think it works pretty well in this room. Well, I hope you found that information entertaining and useful. And now you know why I'm not recommending a shotgun mic. I'm not saying they're bad products and used in the right situation. It may be a good tool for you. But if you're doing production in a smaller room that is not sound controlled or sound engineered, it's probably not your best choice. And there's almost no way around the simple matter of physics that getting a microphone up close to your sound source is the ticket to getting great quality sound. Now, how to get great quality sound for your video productions? Let's save that for another upcoming episode. And I hope you choose to come back and catch that. If you're already a subscriber, thank you very much. I appreciate your support. And if you haven't subscribed yet, well, I hope you consider doing so. Because actions like subscribing, commenting on the videos, hitting that like button, or clicking that bell for notifications of upcoming videos, all of these things help you find this channel again and send a message to YouTube that people are enjoying the content and that encourages YouTube to share this channel with more people, and I appreciate it. So thanks again for tuning in, and I hope to see you again soon on another upcoming episode.